Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I want to talk a little bit about crafting. Now many of you know I've been trying to do more guide-based content these past few months because there's always new players coming onto the game, and it's just helpful for all types of players in general. Even someone like me who's played since Division 1 launched, I'm learning new stuff all of the time. That said, I've gotten requests to do a crafting guide before, but for the most part, I didn't really see a huge need for it. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a blueprint, you can spend some materials, and you get an item without having to farm for it. Boom. Plus, there's been a million guides made on it before. But what I thought might be helpful is going over and highlighting some of the rare, exclusive, and lesser known items that crafting contains. That I know for a fact some of you are unaware of, because every time I bring it up someone is always like, I had no idea that existed. And so, if you want to learn about some of the exclusive items and some new things that you can craft and incorporate into your build, you've come to the right place. If you end up enjoying this video, learn something from it, a like would be greatly appreciated, and be sure to click that subscribe button as well as turning on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future guides, especially as we head into year 5 here. There's going to be a lot to go over. But without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, so here we are at the crafting station, and I want to go over three different things in this video in relation to crafting. There will be timestamps down below in case you've maybe heard of one or two of these, you can skip around to your liking. But let's just get right to it. Now this first one is probably the most known out of these different ones, but it is still very important to point out, and I feel like for some people, even if they were aware of this some time ago, it is pretty easy to forget. Even myself, I forget this is an option sometimes, and that is that you can craft any optimization material that you possibly want. So any of the possible optimization materials in the game, you have the two specific ones, the field recon data and the SHD calibration. You have the different weapon type ones, the gear type ones, and the faction materials. You can craft any of them with the more common materials found in the game. You can see on the right side what you need to craft any amount of bundles of these, and you see the amount that you get at the bottom on the right side. So if I wanted to craft one bundle of the backpack weave, for example, I would need that amount of materials on the side, and then it says at the bottom I would get 10 backpack weave for it. So this is not necessarily the most efficient or the most optimal way to, you know, farm optimization materials. It's probably better to go directly after them instead of trying to get the other materials and then craft these. But if you ever need just a few and you're just in a jam, need them right away. This is a good way to cap off on however much you need. And so it's important to remember that this optimization section of the crafting station exists and that you can use it to your advantage. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the exclusive named items that are, like I said, exclusive to the crafting system that I feel like even if somebody has seen them before, maybe you don't realize that you're not going to get them to drop out in the open world because you need to unlock the blueprint and you need to get them via the crafting station. So before we look at them in there, let's take a look at where you actually get these items from, the blueprints for them, that is, and that is from the field research data of these specializations. And so especially for year one pass owners who never had to uh, do this field research because you unlock the specialization right away, you might not have ever known that there were exclusive named items that were set to these tracks. So let's go to the gunner, for example, and you'll see that at tier two and tier four, there are two different high-end blueprints that you unlock. So you get the Vedmedista vest there, and you get the Schleppner LMG from Tier 4. And each of the three, again, it's these three because they were the post-launch ones, they all have two different blueprints. This one has the Motherly Loves, this one has the Send-Off Shotgun, and then the Firewall has the Ammo Dump and the Savage Wolverine. And so once you do the field research, and again, that, that is this progression tier stuff that you have to do to unlock the specialization if you do not get the year one pass, which automatically unlocks it for it. Or if you do own the year one pass, you can also optionally do the field research data to get these extra cosmetic and blueprint things. Once you fully unlock it, then you can go back to the crafting station and you will find those blueprints waiting for you to craft the actual item. So for the Savage Wolverine, for example, right here at the top of the ARs, you'll see the Savage Wolverine right here. And like I said, those items, you can, all six of them, there's three weapons and three gear pieces, those will not drop out in the open world. So unless you, like I said, go through the field research data and unlock them via here, you're not going to get them. Now, I did craft a blank copy of each of them just so you can see their individual perks in, in case you have not seen them before. So firstly, the Savage Wolverine comes with perfectly close and personal. This is probably the best one out of the six. I really like this gun. I've used it before. The Schleppner comes with perfect frenzy. That can also be really nice for certain builds. The Sendoff comes with perfect distance, which is one of those kind of legacy year one talents. Uh, but you get 100% uh, optimal range, which can be quite nice. You then have the Vedmedista Vest, which comes with perfectly braced. 
you have the ammo dump holster down here, which comes with 100% or 10% rather ammo capacity as a third attribute on there. And lastly, you then have the motherly love gloves, which comes with 10% skill health as one of the attributes on there. So there you have it. If you were unaware, the crafting station and the crafting system in the game does have six exclusive named items for the end game. And so if you weren't aware of that, then go out and get them. All right, and the last thing to talk about is probably the most important because it can enable some very powerful and specific types of builds. So if you're not aware of it, you really should be. And that is the fact that the crafting station is also home to some exclusive categories of items, but maybe not in the way you're thinking. So if, you, if you've never seen these before, then this might be a surprise. But if you go to any of the six categories of gear here in the crafting station, let's go to gloves, and you tab all the way down here, you'll see that in the other category, you have improvised gloves. Now, like I said, this improvised category and this improvised piece exists for all six pieces. So you can find it on the gloves, you'll find it on the chest, etc. All six, it'll be there. Now, what they are is they're high-end pieces. However, they don't come with a brand. But because of that loss of a brand, it does come with a mod slot, which means you can get a mod slot if you want it on all six of your pieces. So let's craft one of these just to show you an example. And you'll see that it comes with, like I said, no brand. So you just have the core attribute and your two attributes as well. But then it comes with a mod slot, which usually for gloves does not exist. Now, this does mean that for the most part, the improvised pieces for the backpack, mask, and chest piece are pretty much obsolete. There's no real reason why you would ever want a improvised piece that comes without a brand since you already get a mod slot on those three pieces to begin with. But specifically, the improvised gloves, knee pads, and holster can be very valuable for specific types of builds. I made builds before using them. They allow you to get really high crit damage values because you can stack crit damage twice per piece. They can work really well for specific hazard protection builds. If you want a good backfire build, you can stack extra bleed resist mods on your mods for these improvised pieces, again, in those lower three slots. So they can be a really useful addition to particular types of builds. And if you were unaware that they are here in the crafting system, you probably wouldn't see them because, again, they don't drop out in the open world. It's something that you have to craft and something that you unlock via this entire system, and they can be really beneficial. So once again, don't miss it. On any of the six gear pieces, you just tab all the way down to this other category, and you will find the improvised piece for any of the gear slots right there. And there you have it, everybody. Those are some of the more secretive and less known aspects about crafting, showing off a few of the exclusive items that you can get from it. And I hope this was helpful, because there is certainly a lot that can be gained by incorporating some of this stuff. Let me know your thoughts on everything we covered here. If you were not previously aware of these items and secrets, any plans that you're thinking of to start incorporating them? And if you did already know about them, are there any build ideas or tips that you can share to give some inspiration to others? Whatever your thoughts or questions are, leave them down below. And as always, I look forward to reading through them. And that's going to do it for me today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold, out.